Well, why'd you become my neighbor? Honestly, moved in. <laughs> honestly, it was like fate, honestly. <laughs> so, Coach Flo said that I could come train with him. No? Well, actually, no. I just had a feeling that he was going to say, yep, for sure, like, you can come. And Kenny was, like, confident, like, he was he was going to be in. So I was like, all right. And it was, like, Friday. And she's like, just come stay in my guest room. And, like, you can be here until you figure out, like, what, what the next move is. So I packed my bags, like, came over. And one day on the phone, she's like, the house right next door to me is, like, <laughs> literally for sale. And she, like, went inside, just broke in, and was, like, showing me around. And I was like, I could live there. <laughs> And then, like, what, like, within two weeks? Yeah, you, I texted my um, realtor, and I'm like, hey, I think somebody, I was like, my friend wants to buy the house next to me. And she was like, really? Maybe she should, like, look around. Like, she shouldn't decide so soon. I was like, no, she's pretty certain. She forced me to look at, like, a couple 20 houses. different houses. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, nope, mm -mm, not this. <laughs> and then the first thing we did was we knocked down the fence so that we could walk back and forth to each other's houses um, without yeah. like going to the front door. That was kind of cool. Yeah, it lasted about a week. We were trying to go like through the front yard. And, like, yeah, we can't like, we're trying to go get some eggs or something <laughs> in the morning. We don't want to be like hiding from our neighbors. So how to make a passageway. Yeah. And now you cook dinner for me, so it's nice. She uses my grill and then we just have dinner every single night. We ride together to practice. Um, it's like the ultimate setup, the ultimate training. <laughs> Partner set up. I'm, I'm more pickier than her when it comes to food, but I'll eat it and she will not eat her food. If she doesn't like something, she will not eat it. That's fair. Yeah. But she's she, picky. She doesn't like a lot of stuff, but she'll like gag and eat it. <laughs> but if I don't like it, I'm just like, if I smell it and the smell is off or the look is off, like I won't touch it. <laughs> but she'll eat it, but like just be gagging. While I mean, like who it. likes vegetables? Nobody, but you have to eat it because they're good for you, so I'll just <laughs> eat up really quick, and I'm like, okay, yeah. on to the good stuff. Kenny's strategy to eat dinner, she'll, she'll go from her least favorite food to, like, her most favorite food, and she takes <laughs> it by, like, the handful, and, like, you'll see, you'll look over. If she really doesn't like what's on the plate, her mouth is, like, full, like a chipmunk, and she's just like... <laughs> And you eat your favorite thing first, and you're like, ew, I have the green beans, or ew, I have broccoli. I'm like, you should have had it first. <laughs> and then you can just have your good stuff at the end. You gotta get it over with. Mm -hmm. oh, vacation ideas. Go. The beach. Where? Some are warm. Not this warm, though. Not 110 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the beach will be nice. On the water. Jet skis. Jet skis. Um... That's, all, that's, the, that's the criteria for me. Yeah, somewhere definitely warm on the beach would be nice. Here's a good one, because I learned this. I learned this more so this week watching Kenny than anything. When I was in the stands for her semifinals with my parents, I was so stressed. And I like looked at them and I was like, how do you do this? Like, this is horrible. I, don't, I literally do not enjoy watching this race right now. Like, I knew she was going to be fine. <laughs> like, I knew you were going to qualify, but, like, I was so stressed watching. And then for the finals, like, I couldn't even sit there. We went down, like, it was hard for me to even watch the race. And I was, like, telling Shaq, I was like, I would rather be running this race. Right now. I would be more, <laughs> I'm more nervous watching the race than I, than I am, like, running it myself. I mean, I was stressed watching you run that. I was stressed just the fact that you were standing out there for so long, and I'm like, hurry up, because everyone, I know your head is like going a thousand miles per hour, and I'm like, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, no false starts, um, but I was sweating, I was sweating pretty bad, I was like, and my leg, I was like this, You're come probably on, sweating it was I was like, like come on, Jenna, <laughs> Coach Flo was like, Kenny, and I was like, what? <laughs> coach Flo has heart attacks too. I know, so. we love giving our coach a heart attack, but, hey, Tokyo is going to be really fun. She's my roommate there, so. Hopefully. I was making an assumption, but. <laughs> I mean, who else? What's the village like? Well, COVID edition, I'm not quite <laughs> sure. I feel like we're all in for a surprise. 
But in Rio, it's just like you sit down and it's just like you pointing out every single country. Oh, the cafeteria cool. is like a huge What do they line. serve in the cafeteria? It's like they have a station for like all the different kinds of food. So oh. like there's like a pasta station and there's like meat and there's like really anything that you would eat. There's just options. Mm. So what like what about like the McDonald's? The chocolate the hot chocolate was like on point. I got one of those like every night. So where's the McDonald's? Like McDonald's? you guys said that McDonald's line was always wrapped around the thing. You just walk in and order whatever you want. Oh, that's kinda cool. Yeah. Is Sometimes that the you gotta do food? what you gotta do. Is that the only fast food? Mm, I think. I hope we get to see other athletes. I think that would be kinda cool. Mm hmm Like I wanna see Simone. I think I, I think need a picture with Simone actually. That's Kenny's favorite athlete. Yeah, she's I used to be a gymnast, so seeing her do what she does is just mind blowing. I think my favorite thing from the village that well, wasn't actually like a really good thing, but the fire alarm got pulled. <laughs> <laughs> and so everyone's like evacuating out and we're like in the stairwell and the gymnastics some of the girls were there and they had their medals around their neck. And I was like, Why did you guys bring your medals? And they're like, Well, if the thing burns down, like we wanna bring our medals with us. <laughs> <laughs> Valid points were made. <laughs> I understand. Wow. For me on the line, I think I just kept like repeating the same lines to myself. Like, I have, like, I'm confident. I have faith. I got this. And just saying that over and over again just kept me kind of calm. I wasn't like extremely nervous like I was in like 2016. Um, I was able to control my nerves a little bit better. But I was just. Something inside me, I was just like, I've got this. Like, this time, like, I've got this. Mm -hmm. And that's just kind of how I ran my race. I'm like, I didn't get out, but guess what? Like, I'm going to do whatever it takes um, to catch back up. And I kind of just ran so confident. Even though, if you go back and look, like, my coach was like, that was horrible. <laughs> Your form was all over the place. And I'm like, coach. But we did it. And he was like, I, I'm proud of you. Like, yes, you're right. Like, that, you ran gutsy. The technique was not there. Um, the blocks start, your block start wasn't there, but at the end of the day, it's just how bad you want it. And so um, it's just this time I was just so confident in myself. What was going through yours? Mm, I think for the 100, I was coming back from like multiple injuries, like foot injuries. So I felt like, uh, like I knew I could do it in the 100, but I wasn't as confident as I was, like, I knew for a fact, like, coming into this weekend, like, I was qualifying in the 200, like, there was no doubt in my mind, but in the 100, I was kind of, like, I know, like, I know I have it in me to run a lot faster than what I ran this weekend, but I, there was still, like, slight, like, hesitation at some point, so, like, after the 100, like, I knew I was going to get through the rounds, then getting fourth was kind of, like, I don't know if it was fate, like, I didn't feel <laughs> to the fire, but, like, I was like, there's no possible way I'm going to Rio just to be, like, a part of the relay. Like, not knowing. I, it's not like a secure spot. Like, they can pick whoever they want for the relay. So, for me, going into the two, it was just, like, I was relaxed. I was confident, and I just knew, like, whatever it was going to take, I was going to get on the team. For yeah. That. I felt like you ran confident. Like, every round, like, when you looked to the left, I was like, oh, she's just relaxing. Like, you could tell, like. Yeah, you were on a mission. Mm -hmm. I think in the finals, my like like Flo said to her, he was picking out stuff that I needed to do better. But overall, I was happy with it. It was a PB, but three looking, PBs. Looking at it now, it's like I can see like I did not execute it perfectly, and there's a lot of room to improve. So it's exciting to be able to like get back to work for like six weeks and then go to Tokyo and see the times we can throw down there. And she was in the back. Flo, Flo was multitasking for the final two. And he was like, Kenny, you got her because I got to go coach the long jump. Yeah, I was and coach so K. He's like, when you, get in the, when you get in the block, I'll be back there. But, like, your warm-up. <laughs> and I was like, all right, Kenny, just, just tell me what time it is. Uh, <laughs> talk to me about anything but my race, and we're good. <laughs> like, just keep me calm. And, yeah, so I was confident and relaxed. Coach K, 
I did not do any coaching. I just held your ice bag. I'm like, cool down, drink some water. You look good. You just look like you knew exactly what you wanted. So that was just great to see. Like we finally kind of just left the technique and just went out there and competed the best we could. And we came out pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> like the results showed all the hard work that we put in. Cause at practice, I'm good with like tempo workouts and she's oh good with gosh. sprinting workouts. So we kind of like alternate, like Mondays, I'm like, I got the lead, like I got this. And then Fridays, I'm like, just try to hang on, Kenny. I know you're not as fast, but just try, because that's all you can do. <laughs> fall training is like hilarious to watch. And Flo knows like Mondays, he's going to see me on the ground, like crying like a baby. Like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I have so much lactic. And then Fridays, I'll walk to the track like, this can't be that bad. Like, I can get through a sprint workout. And Kenny's like, I hate this. I'm like, no, this was way easier than one day. So, yeah. And Flo, like, really enjoys the fact that we can battle each other and push each other. And it's like, I love it that she can kick my butt on Mondays and sometimes Fridays. But she's not really. scared to, like, push. She's not scared to push me and, like, <laughs> kick me to the ground and be like, if you can't keep up, I'm leaving you. Like, and I'm like, okay, like, well, we're the, I'm we going to try to keep up and, and keep up with you for as long as possible. But <laughs> sometimes I'm like, dang, I can't hang on. We have the same personality of, like, we don't like losing. So if she's winning a rep, she, I'm giving it everything I can to try to win that rep. But if she's got it, she's got it. I'm like, there's nothing I can do. So... That's like the cool thing about it. It's like we both give 110 at practice and it's just so nice like that we were able to run so well here because we just been like working our butts off since fall. Um, Sometimes Flo is like, Jenna, Kenny, you're not going together. Like, <laughs> yeah, because sometimes we like groups. to race. This is not a time to be racing. And we're, like, <laughs> we're not racing, we're just running with each other. And he's like, but you're racing. Both of you are trying to get to the finish line, and no, not today. I said 13 seconds, not 11, and we were like, well, we feel good, so. Flo, that's too slow. <laughs> yeah, no, it's pretty, it's pretty awesome being able to train with, like, somebody that you're so close to. It uh, just makes everything better, because we have the same goals, same ambitions, and you don't really find that often in, like, a training group, like, we care a lot about each other, but it's nice that we're in two different events. So at the end of the day, like, we're not going to be going at it at the, you know, in competition. So that's nice. And I think that's why we can stay as close as we are just because of that. Um, yeah. But. It's like the, the ultimate training partner right there. Yeah. But it's also nice, too, where we're neighbors, but, like, we give each other space, like, when we need it. Like, you know, like, sometimes I'm like, I'll see you at dinner time. Like, <laughs> What have you been doing all day? Nothing. I've been laying in the bed. Um, and we get that. Like, we don't take it personal. It was like, Jenna, I was at your door. Like, where are you at? I mean, I think it's helpful, like, that we both have, like, the same goals of, like, we're trying to be the best possible athlete we can be. And for me, I know that she 100% has my back. And, like, if I'm struggling with, like, an injury or, like, something in practice is frustrating, like, I know, like, I can come back and vent to her and she'll be on my side like she'll get me through anything like and it's just nice to know that somebody gets it like a thousand percent like I don't have to explain anything to her she just like she gets it mm -hmm. and I know that she's like gonna be in my corner no matter what and vice versa she can come tell me whatever and it's just like I'm always on team Kenny and like we're gonna figure it out together. Like if there's an injury or like I need I need to find something, like we go get treatment together. We have like we found like a doctor that we work so great with in Austin now and he can like we can text him at any time of the day and be like, Hey, like check me out or like oh yeah, Kenny like Kenny was something was bothering her at practice then and he'll be like, you know, it's it's just like an easy communication and it's like effortless. So it makes take something that's so, like kind of hard to like exhausting mentally but it's like effortless so it's like something off your plate that you don't have to think about yeah um for me uh when like setbacks happen it's like we kind of have other than like her foot injury I feel like we're kind of the same athlete where we it was hard for us to perform when it mattered um like college it was like 
you know, I'd be coming in at the top and somehow underperform. And so that's one thing that we have in common with like, we know what it feels like sometimes to go out there and like, you don't perform to the best of your ability. And you're like, I don't know what just happened. And you hear all the scrutiny and you're just like going back, thinking like what happened, like having someone to talk to who understands that a hundred percent, it's nice to like, be like, okay, like I can lean on her, she can lean on me, that type of thing. Um, and we figure out like what, like we kind of can just go back and talk about what happened going into that race versus like sometimes you can't tell your coach like really how you're thinking because <laughs> they're probably thinking that. <laughs> they take it personal or like, you know, it's just you can't talk to a coach the way you can talk to your friend about certain things um like the way you perform or like things that really were going through your head your coach is like why would you be thinking about that um so it's just it's just nice you know if something happens we have each other uh mm -hmm. to help each other out of that um or when she was like hurt you know i could feel like i had so much empathy towards her because i'm just like i couldn't imagine like hurting my foot and not being able to go out there and perform um, so like whatever she needed, like I was like, like I'm here for you, um, you know, we're going through this together because I, I feel for you. Um, so. I think it helps performance wise too, like maybe if you have a bad, like a bad performance on the track and you're just like second guessing yourself or something, like she sees what I do at practice every day or like I see what she does and it's like, Sometimes it's like people are saying like stuff and it's like, no, like, I know for a fact that you're ready to throw something <laughs> down stupid. Like, don't listen to what anyone else is saying. Like, you're ready to go. It's just you got to put it together. Um, so, like, having, you don't ever have to explain it. Like, I see firsthand every single day how hard she's training and, like, the time she runs. So, like, for me and for her to see what I do, like, we don't have to come back and explain anything. It's more of just, like, a easy conversation yeah I feel like that's like a, a really common question asked even by like I've had like other professional athletes be like what do you do between the Olympics and the other like what do you do between those four years and I'm like I mean train we have track meetings we have world championships like it's a whole season that we do but like the world just doesn't know like or see the meets that we're running in, so it's hard for them to comprehend. Like, it's mm -hmm. not like a basketball season where it's on television or the Friday night football or Saturday night football. Like, yeah. But I, I am so happy that I'm in the career that I am. Like, it's just wild that I love working out and then I get to show the world what I'm doing, you know? Um, so even just to have that slight moment on TV, um, cause our races are just so quick anyways. Um, but just to have that opportunity, uh, I wouldn't want it any other way. Um, like job. my neighbor literally, she was like, it's like, they think it's like, they can't comprehend us working out. That's all we do. And so I like always run up and down the street, you know, when I need to shake out and stuff. And she's like, what did she tell me? She was like, it must get boring doing what you do. And like, and I'm like. I'd rather be working out than sitting behind a desk. I love oh, it. Man. I stay in shape. I'm healthy. Um, like, I wouldn't want it any other way, to be yeah. honest. And when I said that, she was like, oh, okay. Yeah. You know, it's like they can't comprehend us, like, just training. Right. And But it's so fun. You know, I think when you have a passion, like, when you're passionate about something, so um, it doesn't seem like a job, you know. And then when you're doing it with somebody, um, next to you who is like your best friend it just makes it even more like enjoyable to go to training because we're like we laugh all the time in the car like oh we're about to die today like we know we're about to be in pain we're like, and we're it's like just... driving to practice <laughs> guessing like what could the workout possibly be and like <laughs> repeat 300s god i hope not like yeah and then this is like when the, we're dying together like but we know on the other end it's going to get us to our goals mm -hmm. you know um so yeah it's and it's like some people would like dread the thought of like everyone's like running is like a punishment like <laughs> why would you want to do that and it's like i genuinely enjoy going to practice every day and pushing myself to the limit and just seeing like how well we can like conquer a workout or like perform for that day yeah and like when we get a workout that say flow gives us something and i'm like <laughs> 
<laughs> trying my absolute hardest and I end up on the ground with like a jackhammer in my brain. <laughs> it's like funny to me. Like I leave practice and I'm like, wow, he really he really killed me today. <laughs> and it's more of like a I'm gonna get it next time type of attitude rather than like, dang I hate coming out here and running. Like no, it's like fun. But I, I think one thing that like sets us apart from like some athletes is they don't like to hurt. Like some athletes they show up on Mondays and Fridays knowing that it's gonna it's it's gonna you're gonna feel uncomfortable you're gonna get lactic acid and they don't push themselves you know mm -hmm. we aren't scared to hurt in training because we know if we want to be the best in our event it, you gotta you gotta put the work in and you gotta you can't be scared to mm -hmm. um, feel uncomfortable you know and I think that's also why we're so similar because we're like we're gonna hurt but like let's do it like, oh, if wow. we we get upset if we don't even hit a time in practice like you know, we're just... We'll be like, let's make it up in this next rep. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like... <laughs> or sometimes it's like, if I'm really hurting, and I look at Kitty, and I'm like, oh no, she feels good. When that whistle blows, I'm like, just hold on, Jenna. Just hold on, like... Just, just try to stay close. <laughs> She's being dramatic. For me in the hurdles, you're right when it comes to, like... If I think of something else or I just get out of focus, I can really hurt myself. Um, I've broken my hand in a race just because I forgot to flex it just a little bit more. Um, but like, it's just, it's, it's such a fun event. And I think I have ADHD, so running the hurdles, honestly, I think I have a weird way of focusing, you know? I'm just like, one, two, three, like, it doesn't, it's not hard for me. Like, it's, I'm a natural when it comes to like, getting my rhythm um but it just comes back to you have to put the work in like technique i rely so much on my technique and we do so many drills where it's like when the gun goes off my body's done this a thousand times um coach knows like we've been over a hundred hurdles in training so you just cross your fingers and hope that your your body knows what it's going to do because a lot of times in the race like when i'm running fast i'm not thinking I'm just going, <laughs> um, but it is, it is, you're correct when it's, if you lose focus for just a slight second, um, you could really hurt yourself, um, mm -hmm. but I'm still in the event, so. <laughs> a lot of times press, they're like, so what happened in the race? And I'm like, honestly, I could not tell you, you tell me, you saw yeah. it. I know I was running it, but I can't tell you how that, how that how the race went. If you can't um, talk about the race, you know it was a good race. Because you're like, I don't know what happened. I blacked out. <laughs> if I'm like, well, I hit hurdle one, two, and three, then that means that that was not a good race at all. Um, but just to get to the, sometimes in a race, you know you're running well when you're just, everything else is just not existing and you're just so in the zone. Um, but the 200 is longer than the hurdle. So the, are you thinking? No. <laughs> it's like when I when I am running and I run well, like this weekend if I'm running well, it's more like it should feel like so like when you've crossed the finish line, you're just like cool, I just I just ran, like and you don't have to bend over, <laughs> you don't have, you're not like completely lactic or tired because you're running relaxed and free and like just opening your stride, not thinking, just like doing what you do in practice every day, like run like that's the point of practice is to run as hard as you possibly can and try to focus on your form there and then <laughs> when you get to the race like you're just going for the for the win and like hoping that what you did in practice is going to carry through in the race so like <laughs> when i cross the finish line and i'm like standing up and i'm not bent over and like dying catching my breath like i'm like oh that was a good race and sometimes like if i finish and i'm like lactic and can't walk afterwards i'm like I ran so bad because I'm like <laughs> tight and I'm like trying too hard and it's like it sounds like stupid to say but it's like you're not supposed to try that like it's supposed to be like effortless when you run like try if you're trying to run really fast and you're trying too hard like it's just gonna slow you down and tighten you up yeah sometimes your brain goes and that's when like you don't want it to go you want to just be like in the zone and just running and sticking to what you want and like sometimes I'll click in and out of like <laughs> move but it's like at the end of the day you just want to go and like hold on and just i mean be relaxed flow literally every single day even in the warm-ups it's like 
drop your shoulders, relax your hands, like make your face look like this. And like, he's so nitpicky. And like, I feel like at practice, it's like nothing we do can be perfect. He's never satisfied with anything mm -hmm. that we do. And it's like, sometimes it's like, dang, like I can't do anything right. <laughs> and then it's like, Kenny will walk away from the hurdle. I'm like, Kenny, he just like turned away and like clapped his hands like you're doing good or like. But I wouldn't like see him. I'm like, I'm pretty sure that felt fast. Like, I don't know. It's like he didn't say anything to me except I did ABC wrong. Like, and I'm like, and Jenna be like, Kenny, though, he clapped his hands. Like, that was a good rep. He just didn't tell you, you know? And that's just Coach Flo's personality. He does the same thing with Jenna. And, or he'll talk when, like, you're far away and you can't hear him. And you're like, what'd you say? He was like, oh, well, you, you did this wrong, this wrong. And I'm like, no, he actually said this, Jenna. So, <laughs> like, but that's what he, that, like, he wants to make us the best we can possibly be. So, like, he's looking for any possible room for improvement. So, like, she said, she finished the race, and he's like, oh, you did this, this. It was horrible. Like, same thing for me. I finished the race, <laughs> and he's like, you didn't do this, this, and this. And I'm like, I know, but, like, I still feel it. Right. And, and it's like, I mean, having someone like him is, like, is, like, amazing because he's never satisfied as – we yeah. are. We're always striving to be better. And so having a coach that wants us to be the best yeah. we could possibly be is, like, And if he's not saying anything to you, then, like, that's an issue. Like, it's like hearing him say things that we need to fix, it's like, okay, he cares, you know? If he's not saying anything, that's when we should probably be worried and be like, ugh. I don't think like bad. <laughs> We're not doing too good today. I think Coach Flo's checked out. <laughs> <laughs> Right now, um, we're still deciding if we want to go overseas. We're not really sure right now. Um, we're just trying to, we have one more athlete competing today and I think Coach Flo will make his decision. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, whatever he wants us to do, like we're 100% locked in. Um, if we go compete, cool. If we don't, cool. We're just kind of flexible and. Yeah, I think for the most part, we'll just keep it consistent. like. Whatever, if we go overseas, like, he's going to send us overseas together um, with probably some of our other training partners. Um, and if we don't go overseas, we'll stay in Austin and probably run in the U.S. somewhere and do a couple meets. But, like, we're going to keep our routine consistent and just train hard, train together. Yeah. Eat what we've been eating and just, like, <laughs> continue to, like, get stronger and faster and carry it through to Tokyo. She went to Oregon course everyone knows that and we were like we've like spoke a little bit in college like hey no, Kentucky did not talk to me oh my gosh she thinks we were so mean but really like she didn't speak to us it'd be <laughs> they beat us by two points at NCAAs we got second they won and I think you exchanged like a good job and I was like good job to you and then we kind of talked, we sat at the same table at the Bowerman um, Awards. Uh, our parents got to talk to each other. Um, no, we were asking, um, we were asking each other what we were going to wear. Yeah. Because I'm like really indecisive. And I was like, I need help figuring out what I'm about to wear. <laughs> Let me ask Kenny what she's wearing because. <laughs> yeah. And then like we also, we, we became close like in the circuit. Mm -hmm. I felt like we had the same personality where like. We don't really want to be around a lot of people, but like we need someone to talk to, like not like at the hotel. Um, like I remember, like China, that Diamond League. Um, yeah. yeah, it's just like when you, I don't know, when you're just like <laughs> when you become best friends with people, it's like not on purpose. It's just like when it clicks, it clicks, and it like works. It works. Like not forced. It's not on purpose. It's just like oh, like we hung out, we talked, and then it's just like. And then he became my neighbor, so. <laughs> I don't know, it just happened. Like, we were just cool with each other. Yeah, and then you went on vacation with me in 2017 in Mexico. That was fun. Yeah. Um, and then you moved to Austin. You know what I mean? I remember, like, in, like, 2015. I don't know what year it was. But it was, like, when I was going, yeah, it was probably 2015. I was going pro. And we were figuring out, like, training and all that stuff. And one of my friends was, like, he was like, if you could train with anyone, like, as, like, a training partner, who would it be? And at the time, I was like, I knew Kenny, but we weren't, like, best of friends. It was just, like, we were cool with each other. We were mm -hmm. friends. And I was like, I don't know. I don't know why, like, I would say this, but, like, I think 
like the best training partner for me would be Kenny and he's like really why like why would you want to train with her I'm like well I feel like we have like a very similar personality I know she works really hard like training wise we're the same person and like she's a hundred hurdler but I'm like a hundred two hundred runner so like training partner wise like we would be perfect together because we're not we're gonna push each other but like we're not going out the same spot so um so it's kind of funny how it worked out because like when I ended up moving to Austin and that was her training partner I was like remember when I said like <laughs> my like first choice training partner would be Kenny like look how it's working out like <laughs> who knew Hilarious. Kenny can make <laughs> like a couple things she can make good pancakes um she can make sandwiches like she's pretty good at making sandwiches um there's something else let me think of it oh she makes these muffins <laughs> She makes these muffins that are like, it's like, they're pretty good, like coffee cake. I learned that coffee cake doesn't have any coffee in it. But we had a good. debate. I was like, she was like, what are these or something? I was like, this is coffee cake. And she was like, how much, like, what did you put? Like, did you put coffee in it or something? And I'm like, no, Jenna, like, it's called coffee cake because you're supposed to eat it with coffee. And she was, we were arguing about I, this. I, I, called, I was like, like call your people. mom. I was like, call your mom because I'm pretty sure everyone knows this. And she was like, what? That's so wild. I didn't, I had no idea. I'm like, gosh. Yeah. That's, what her, that's her best subject is those three things. Yeah, but Jenna usually cooks everything. I enjoy cooking, so it works out. It's easier, like, it's easier to cook for two people than one person because yeah. you don't just go to the store and buy, like, one piece of chicken or something. So. Yeah. And it's, and it's nice. Yeah, it's nice. Like, I wouldn't want to sit in the house and just eat dinner by myself <laughs> every night. So it's cool, like. Well, and we're on the same, like, diet. Like, we know we can't eat, like, trash. Um, so it's Yeah, it's nice that, we you know, we got to eat vegetables. Like, there has to be a veggie on the plate, a protein on the plate. Um, so. Or if we go down, we're it. going down together. <laughs> Yeah, basically. But <laughs> I'll be like, Kenny, please give me a cookie. Today. <laughs> I really need some ice cream. She's obsessed over ice cream and cookies. And I'm just like, she doesn't care about food. Yeah, That's I'm not upsetting. a big food eater. Like, I love sweets, but like, I'm not like obsessed over food. Like, I'll, I can eat like one meal a day and be perfectly fine. But her and my sister, they're like sweet fanatics I just when it comes to, her to sister cookies. About it. Cookies and cookies and ice cream. Yeah. And it's doesn't make sense. Yeah. I don't understand, but it's fine. Hmm. Grant Holloway. I'm gonna throw that out there. Um I feel like it's like just the athletes that are like really performing well, like you know, every every athlete gets hot and they're just like having like breakthrough performances or just like you know when Kenny touches the track, like she's gonna run faster. Like when a thing touches the track, she's gonna do something crazy. Or Aje, or like yeah. I, there's so many people yeah. like you know, or like Sydney or Shamir. Like there's so many fantastic American athletes, and for me, like I just like to watch great performances. So it's not necessarily like I have to watch one specific person. It's like I might not even be that close with them, but I know like. When they step on the track, they're probably going to throw something down <laughs> that's fun to watch, so I want to watch that event. That's going to be, like, a, a battle to the finish line. Yeah. It's hard to point out just, like, one athlete in each event because, like you said, it's so talented that it's almost offensive to be, like, only Sydney is, like, the best 400 hurdler. Like, yeah, yeah, she's broke the world record herself, but so has Delilah, and so is Shamir is fantastic, and Ashley Spencer is, like, amazing, so it's, like, yeah, to throw out one person, that's what's wrong with track and field to me, <laughs> is, like, there's so much talent, you can't just highlight one person, because, like, Quinera Hayes, like, she just won the 400, and it's, like, amazing, but you can't just throw out one person. Yeah. I mean, like, the U.S. is stacked, so you know every event is going to be, it's going to be exciting to watch. And, you know, I think for me, even, like, the distance running, like, I, like, normally, like, don't really like watching distance because it takes so long. But, like, at this level, at Hayward, like, the steeplechase, the 5,000, like, everything. You don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, everything is so exciting, and it's so nice just to, like, the crowd gets into it. Um, but so yeah, it is basically a mini Olympics and 
you know, you know, if you if you can go to trials and perform well, that means hey, that you just basically experienced the Olympics. You know, if you can control yourself there, that's a glimpse at what you can do at Tokyo. Um, so having really like having a competition for America, it's actually like a good thing. You know, it's nice to run against the best because you know that however, you, like if you do good, you're probably gonna do good in Tokyo. Um, and it's nice practice. Uh, keeps everyone on their toes. Everyone knows they have to bring it because everybody wants it. There's so many good, but world records getting broken, like American records. I mean, there was some. There was like five records just five records yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, I'm just biased because I like hurdles, so that's why I say Grant. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, you obviously have like your friends and your favorites. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, if I were to pick athletes, like, I'm going to pick my friends because I want to watch my friends run. But, like, I enjoy watching, like, every, every event. Yeah. Because there's a solid American or six solid Americans in every event. Yeah. I feel like the, it's obvious to say what Kenny is. Like, I watch her practice every day. I don't know if I should put it in the atmosphere. I, <laughs> but, like, she runs times that have never been run before. And, like, it's funny when she's, like, it's, like, we'll be, like, you're ready to PR so bad, <laughs> like, and it's, like, when you think about it, it's, like, PRing for her is breaking the world record again and running a time that nobody else has ran, and so, like, I mean, I watch her practice every day, and she's doing times that she's never ran before in practice, so it's, like, it's scary to, to think, like, how fast she can run, <laughs> because, I mean, she's... Dominant now, if stop. <laughs> like, Jenna is what like, she can do is nasty. Okay, and uh, um, <laughs> I'm just being honest. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Um, like, Jenna's like a silent, like, killer. Like, she'll smile at you, but then, like, smash you at the same time, you know? <laughs> and so, I feel like that's how she is. Like, it's like, even like before she runs like she's she's smiling at people and just being hurt but i'm just like little do you guys know what what's about to happen like it, <laughs> it's like crazy because i'm like i she's put the work in so i'm like yeah she's nice but guess what like she's about to do something on the track um it, it's just so cool that finally we were able to show the world kind of like what's gonna happen in tokyo Kenny, because she has a world record, so she's the greatest of all time. <laughs> I don't know what it takes because I haven't done it yet. Not yet. But uh, it's all about <laughs> you. You're the greatest of all time. The best to ever do it. Oh, man. Um, I hate talking about me, so. I can yeah. tell you what she does. To me, the, I mean, I just feel like we've said it a thousand times. It's, it's hard work. <laughs> you can't. You can't fake hard work, you know? I feel like there's been times where we haven't performed well, but we know eventually we're gonna perform well because we do put in so much mm -hmm. at practice. Um, it's like not cutting corners, you know, eating right, doing the small things. Um, I mean, Kenny's like, even at practice, like, even if we're going to the weight room and it's 6 a.m., <laughs> like, She's going to compete with you with everything. Like, she has to win with everything. Like, it doesn't matter if you're doing pull-ups. If you have 20 pounds on your chest, she wants to put 45 pounds on her chest. because, she, Or if you have 10 pull-ups, she'll be like, I'm going to do 50 pull-ups because I can. And then it's like, we're going to practice. And she's, like, laser-focused. It's like, it doesn't matter what we're doing. Like, she wants to be the very best at practice. Like, it doesn't matter what we're doing. Like... If Flo says to do something in her head, she's like, I'm going to try to be the very best. Like, <laughs> I'm going to try to be the very best I can be. If I'm doing a hurdle drill, she's 100% laser focused. Like, you're never going to catch her, like, not trying. Like, I've never, like, dead serious, since I've been training with her, I've never seen her just, like, come to practice and be like, I don't want to be here. It's like, <laughs> if she doesn't want to be there, she's like... I gotta find it in me somehow, like, I don't care what, what I gotta do to make it happen, but I'm going to drink this coffee, get some energy, like, I'm gonna do something, <laughs> and I'm gonna get this workout in, and, like, that's what's crazy, is, like, she, if she doesn't feel like practicing, 
she will find it in her to make sure she shows up and gives a thousand percent. And that's why, like, I'm like, she, oh, that's man. the way she is. And that's why she's so freaking good is because she puts so much work into it. And people don't see, like, like, yeah, she's talented naturally, but, like, the amount of effort, nobody else would want, like, very few people in the world would ever, like, put that much dedication to what they do. So I struggled in school, and I school didn't come naturally to me. And my other siblings, I felt like they were getting A's and B's without, like, like trying that hard. And for me, I think once I realized that, like, I struggle, the only way for me to make those good grades is to put the work in. And so from a small age, I knew I had to work overtime to make decent grades and to to keep up with my my siblings to the best that I could and I never gave up um, I just basically did everything that I could to excel in school and when I played sports no matter what sport I played I am like I'm really good at this and <laughs> I feel like I'm I'm like not like I put the hard work behind it so it just makes it even more enjoyable and I realized like I started in gymnastics. I'm like, I'm flipping on my own without being taught it. And I'm like, you guys can't do this. Like, it just came so natural. So it's like, I just been working hard, like, my entire life, um, whether it was a sport or school. So I think that's probably where it came from. <laughs> if Coach Flo said, punch yourself in the face every <laughs> night before you go to sleep and you'll break the world record, she would do it 100%. Like, she would do it. She's being dramatic. <laughs> No, she would do it. Like, anything that he tells her to do, like, she does it. I mean, I fall, I listen to instructions. I like, I don't like to cut corners, and she's the same way. She doesn't like to cut corners either. Um, we're just competitive people. Like, if we're driving to practice, just know we're going 90 to, like, beat each other. Like, it's like, we're, it's just, we're just, oh, yeah, safely, yeah. <laughs> Put that on there. Um, yeah, we're just really competitive. Um, but we're, like, basically the same person, just in half <laughs> high school I was winning um, whatever but when I got to college it was like oh they're a little bit better than me you know how am I going to adapt to it and again I just fell back on hard work I'm like well if I put the work in like one day I will be like them and I did struggle it was hard for me I'm like is this am I really that good because at practice I'm getting beat and I didn't like that and it was something that I had to adjust to. Um, and over the years, I just kept getting better and better and better in college. So it was like, I didn't make the final NCAAs. The next year I made the final. So it's like, I saw improvement. And then finally, when I got on the pro level, I'm like, oh, like I am with these girls, <laughs> you know? Um, so it was just a learning and adjusting when I got to college probably the same for you yeah it was yeah going to college like going to Oregon like I was good in I was good in California like I won <laughs> state in all my events like I came in and then it was just like <laughs> slapped in the face like my technique was wrong like I was staying after practice for my sprints practice I was staying after practice for my jumps practice like I was just I was just not technically sound like them I was just I mean workouts I would work really hard so I could try to keep up but like I wasn't doing what my coach wanted me to to, to do or look like so I had to like figure out how to do what he wanted and compete um and then it was like each year I feel like I got a little bit better and better um and understood what I was being taught and just became more confident as an athlete and then I think me adjusting to a pro like Kenny's been more successful as a pro probably than I have definitely than I have but like I think it was more for me like I had to find my way of like maybe in college I could rely on if I don't get a good start like I know for a fact I can chase them down but like at a pro stage like if I don't get a good start like these girls are really fast and you're not catching them so then it's more of like a finding confidence that way. Like, how do I compete at a high level, flying to a different country and like be competitive on like a world stage every time. And 
it's been like a battle and then like yeah every year you learn and grow from it and I mean for me also it's like on top of how to be competitive physically like I have to stay healthy too and that's been a battle for me also is like how can I perform but I feel like you did a you've done a great job with dealing with adversity like mm. yeah like I may have been successful right out of college but it's also because I was with my same coach in the same environment so it was like I'm still at I still have the same coach I'm just not going to school you I'm like you were having a hard time with coaching and like your injuries so I'm like the fact that you're able to still you know keep going after everything like that shows the athlete that you are and I feel like true athletes are the ones that can rise after adversity um after things haven't gone smoothly um but I did love shows. my coach huh? I did love my coach yeah yeah you did love I, coach. yeah it was nothing to do with like any sort yeah, of yeah. hard feelings yeah but yeah but if you Figuring were like I, I, I didn't really have I, like my um the way that I train now I have training partners and I train at UT with the team and I feel like when I was fresh out of college like I didn't have the the yeah training partners that I have now like the I could travel to Europe with or go to meets with and just lean on so yeah I feel like making the move for me to come to coach flow was a little bit scary because the training was different but um at the end of the day I wanted to be in a place where I knew I mean I obviously knew coach flow was a fantastic coach but I also was going to have like the the other support of like having training partners and people to be doing the same thing that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I feel like Kenny has a really, really cool story. And like people know about it, but they also don't know about it. It is like, I feel like the world, like honestly, Kenny should have a Netflix, a Netflix <laughs> series, a Netflix show, because like honestly, like her story is really incredible. <laughs> and like, there's so many fun facts. There's so many fun facts. I don't know what story she's talking about. It's just everything. Her life is just like, it's like, is, are, do you live in a movie? <laughs> like, <laughs> and her family is like amazing. Like, it, it's just, yeah. Mm. You, you see the track, Kenny. <laughs> but y'all don't know like everything about Kenny. <laughs> you know some stuff about her, but like you don't know everything about her. Kenny the person. You know Kenny the athlete, but you don't know Kenny the person. They can say the same thing about you. She's really, really a good singer. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't sing. We could do a chop episode. Cooking in the kitchen. Cooking with JK. I like just give her support and then she just cooks. No, honestly, the way the dinner is decided is I'm indecisive, so I'm like, what sounds good? And she's like, I don't care. And I'm like, please pick, because I can't. <laughs> I'm like, we only eat about three things, salmon, steak, or chicken, so <laughs> which one have we not ate yet? Um, but yeah, now we would love to have like a JK channel, just like our inside life so that people can see like us off the track because we're, I'm like a focused person at training, so like I'm just, I don't really talk that much. She doesn't speak. Yeah, I don't really speak. I have headphones in until it's time to actually do the workout, like warm up, I have headphones in. But like off the track, I like I can relax and kind of be goofy, and she's just as goofy as me. Um, so it would be nice. It would be kind of cool to let people in our lives outside of track, because it's like hard to explain what we do and stuff, our personalities. So, um, like all my family and friends are like, it's so like crazy that you guys are like li literally li next door neighbors. Like it doesn't really, <laughs> I don't know how it happened, but I'm thankful that it did happen. And Phyllis lives down the street from us. Yeah, Phyllis, yeah. She, yeah, so it's like an Olympic, I can now finally say it, um, like an Olympian street. Yeah, she, she randomly one day, like I was talking to my mom on the phone and I see like a her car going down the street, but I don't think anything of it. And then I'm like looking in the car, I'm like, wow, that looks like Phyllis. And then she rolls down her window, and I'm like, Phyllis? Like, why are you over here? And she's like, why are you over here? I'm like, this is my house. And she's like, no way, I just bought a house, and it's literally like seven houses away from yeah, us. Yeah, so. it's so funny. That was like, so, so random. Like, out of all the places in the world she could have picked, she picked right. Our neighborhood. 
Yeah. <laughs> and we had, like, I had no communication with her before it just happened.